George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. Hey, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brother Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler review podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. Starting with the Game of Thrones. As always, I am Zach, and sitting here next to me right now in this moment is my brother Nate. Yo! What up, guy? I'm here. I know what's up, because we've been together for like the last three hours. Yeah. But... Anywho. Hey, Zach. Hey. Can you listen to a podcast right now? I will be. Are you going to be doing it on your favorite app? Well, I have a couple of them. Which one? Well, the one I'm talking about is Podcoin. Where you can listen and earn great rewards. I'm pretty sure we have a code for that one. We do. If you are a new user of PodCoin, you can type in Brotherhood and get 300 coins to spend on fucking cool stuff. Sweet. Like giving to charity or gift cards. Yeah, gift cards to like Starbucks and Amazon and all sorts of other places. So if you're hearing this, why haven't you already downloaded PodCoin and started listening to us? Listen to us there. And earn some coins. Do it. Yeah! Yeah! What's up with Game of Thrones? There's like nothing up with Game of Thrones right now. That's, uh, uh, I think Martin. That's disheartening. I think he won some award or something in Dublin alongside some other author. Can't tell you what award it was. Awards are sweet. Yeah, good for him. Congrats. He deserves, he deserves awards. Yay, he does. recognition. Clap for him. Hooray. Anyway, I I that's all I got. Yeah, there's not much going on. Uh, there right really now. isn't. Uh, we're hoping for some big announcements at the end of WorldCon. I don't know when that is or if that's happened. You or... tweeted that you just DM'd your first Dungeons and Dragons game. That that's was exciting. Fun. Yeah, that was pretty good. It now I'm neat. making more. Now neat. I have to make more. He's got the bug. I got to. You've got a fever. You yeah. know what you need. More call bell. That call bell. Anyway, we read Game of Thrones here. If you couldn't tell. I probably couldn't. And so if you joined us last time, we were reading Edard 14. And poor Ned. Poor Ned thought things... Not thought things were going good because his buddy just died, but... He thought he had a plan. He thought he had the upper hand working. going into this situation. And nah. he gathered the council, tried he had to a make... Piece of paper. He was right about to have them confirm him as, as Lord Protector of the Realm. And then got summoned by Joffrey and Cersei to the throne room where Cersei demanded... That they swore fealty to him and made the necessary arrangements for his coronation. Lo and behold, it didn't work out the way he... Yeah, no. Ned tried to present his letter and Cersei tore it up. That was hilarious. Then, and also tore up Barrison's heart. And then the gold cloaks turned on Ned, as did Littlefinger, who did warn him... And they killed all of Ned's men and and took him prisoner. And with that, we come to this episode where we... So it's, yeah, let's point out. So that we've got uh, Arya Four. Is this current chapter that the we the chapter are on. that we're reading next is Sansa Four. Yeah, and then the run right after that, I believe, is the next John chapter. And yeah, so we get the kids all back to back. Kiddo, kiddo, kiddo. I'm kiddo. not sure. We were talking about it yesterday. I'm not sure if Bran is after that. You have the book right there. Uh, yeah, can, I'm gonna do. A we can investigate real doing quick. And real quickie. Do some. Page However, popping. the interesting thing I thought was well, not that I thought, but the interesting. It is Bran right after, so it is all the kids all right kids. after Ned's life begins falling apart. But that's an interesting sequence of events. Yeah. But, so, this Arya chapter takes place, I'm assuming, immediately after Ned's, like, I, I within think almost, it's half an hour or concurrently, like, yeah. Like, as, uh, was Marin, yeah, Marin Trant was in the throne Yeah, room he there, was right? in there, and then yeah, as so soon as the throne room battle it, ended, after it then, was yeah. find the Stark men and take them into yes. custody or kill them. If they resist, and so we open with "Hi, Serial Pharrell is calling out as the the wooden swords are clacking as Arya parries left, right, low, left, and left again. Faster and faster, Arya is retreating as Serial is pushing. Yeah, so they're she's having her final Fuck, lesson, yeah, she dancing is. lesson, here and it's King's a good lesson, one in King's Landing. It's the most important one. I Arya think. is. Actually, I, I disagree because actually, to my previous statement, it is not the most important one. <laughs> All the ones that 
led to her being able to perform. This is like the final exam. Yeah, this, this the is the year end exam. This is it. Yeah. Um, so she she's retreating before him, and he warns her lunge. And when he thrusts, she sidesteps him, sweeping his blade away, and she almost touches him so close it makes her grin she's getting confident and then we kind of i like this sort of like we get the sort of pull away where the the small hall has just been echoing with this clack clack yeah. clack clack of these two just going at it aria is putting i mean every she treats every dancing lesson like this i would assume where yeah, she's absolutely. just she's giving it her all it's not a real quick well, one quick thing. off for her she's we're like only in, in four chapters in her like second chapter she couldn't she, catch the sword. She was bruised and beaten to hell, and it tells us how sore she was that night. At the end of her first lesson, she was exhausted. Yeah. She's been putting in all that effort since day one. She's decent now. Yeah. She can She can have some fun. Not as decent as she thinks. Well, yeah, no, obviously. But, which we know Sarah Farrell is toying with her, yeah. but it says that her his wooden blade caught her high in the chest. She would have a fresh bruise there by the time she went to sleep somewhere out at sea this evening. A bruise is a lesson, she told herself, and each lesson well, makes us better. I just think that's really interesting, like, just how this is all just, you know, this is just kill time before she does get to go home. She's mm-hmm. going home tonight. Yeah. Like, and she's This excited. is a great fucking day. And we know that Sirio is going with her. Yeah. And so, like... This is going to be spectacular. And even right here, like, she's got this hope. She's going to see see her brothers. Like, yeah, no. This is going to be the greatest. That's why day. I noted it is because, yeah, she's entirely intending to be sleeping in a in a cabin tonight on a ship and be headed home. Having a new adventure on yeah. the ocean. And so Sirio steps back. You are dead now. And Arya makes a face. You cheated. You said left and you went right. Yeah, so I think that's just, I think that's hilarious. That's the nine-year-old in Oh, her. yeah, that's yeah. just, no, no, you said left. But I Sirio went. just clicks his teeth, just so. And now you are a dead girl. <laughs> and Arya says, but you lied. And he breaks it down, the first lesson of many in this final one for her. My but... words lied, yeah. This. My words lied right there is that's that's it. My words lied yes. like Arya. That's one of the most important things. My words lied. You need to watch what people right. do rather than what they're saying. My eyes and my arms shouted out the truth, but you were not seeing. I was so. I watched you every second. And I really like how he just keeps calling her dead girl. Yeah. Like to just hammer in this lesson. And then he basically tells her, come, it's it's time to sit, it's time to listen to Serial Pharrell. Yeah, watching is not seeing, dead girl. The water dancer sees. And yeah, he says, come, put down the sword, it is time for listening. And so they go over to the wall, and they sit down on a bench. And he asks her if she knows how it was that he came to be for a sword to the Sea Lord of Bravos. And she replies with not an incorrect answer. No. You were the finest swordsman in the city. Just so. Just but so. why? And he says that there were others who were turned away, and he never really knew why. And there were certainly others who were faster, stronger, younger. So why was Sirio Pharrell the best? And he says, I will tell you this now. And I, lo- I just love his nomenclature. I love Sirio's yes, the, speech patterns. Yeah, it's one, it's, it's so good. It's and, the, and the whole if, Brovosi area. He, he has this way of forcing you to listen to him. Yeah. And you, well, and you he, have to kind of deconstruct his sentences yeah, to get a little that. bit. Like, and that's it. It's just so In a fun very to, simple way, though. It's very Yoda-esque. Where yeah. It's not hard to understand what he's saying. But, but you can hear the wisdom behind it. Yeah, yeah. Everything statements. feels measured with And him. so he says, the seeing, the true seeing. That his, is the heart of it. Touching his eyelid lightly, yeah. That is the heart of it. and uh, So he goes in to how the ships of Bravos travel far and wide, the lands strange and wonderful, bringing back queer animals for the Sea Lord's menagerie. Such animals as you have never seen, girl. But Sirio Pharrell has yeah. seen them. And, and so basically he lists off yeah, some I modern animals. Down. So it's zebras and mm-hmm. how they it's describe them. It's one that them. sounds like a giraffe, yeah, the this long giraffe. neck. Uh, I put what I think is buffalo, basically. He says these big, uh, like, cow, mice things. Buffalo soldier. Yeah. I don't know the song. Uh, that's all I got. Gotcha. Yep. So they, then he also describes what I believe are vol- the raptors, because there's raptors in this mm-hmm. world. And don't. And then the manticores. Manticores. Which is, you know, he even might have mentioned that they were bigger, you know. So um, let's fucking settle this right here, right now on this episode, Aria 4, Brotherhood Without Manners. Are we going to get... In any book, either Winds or Dream of Spring, 
are we going to get, like, the beasts that we hear so much? Are we going to get the ice spiders, big as hounds, and the manticore? Like, are we going to see a manticore fight? Like, they're mentioned so now, much, these oddities. We do see a manticore. Yeah. Because one it is sent attacks after Danny. Danny. Yeah. And that's just the small little thing there. Well, that's there. it. Um, but I think we're going to see ice fighters. Big as hounds. I definitely think we will. Yeah. They are. They're going to be... A thing in in. The, in I hope so. Yeah. I them crawling up winter. I'm walls thinking have winds been a, has is been where they're going or up the wall itself. Coming up the wall itself has been an picturing. image in my head for so, so long. So that's gonna be cool. Uh, I also feel like there's the potential that we will see the Sea Lords Menagerie. Yeah, that we might actually see some of these. Exotic yeah, pieces. Bravos so, is very important to and, a lot of characters. And of so. all people, Arya would be the one that's there traversing this thing, seeing these exotic creatures. So the real, the real, real, real important question. Are there unicorns on Skagos? Yes. Okay, cool. God, I'm they're... satisfied. Jeez. We can move forward. So, anyway, he says, <clears throat> On the day I speak of, the Sea Lord was newly dead. And the uh, this, uh, the first sword was newly dead, and the Sea Lord sent for me. When I came to him, he was seated, and in his lap was a fat yellow cat. One of his captains had brought it to him from an island beyond the sunrise. Have you ever seen his her like? the Sea Lord asked. And Sirio answered, I see a thousand like him in the alleys of Bravos each night. And the Sea Lord laughed. And that day, I was named for a sword. And Arya, I, and I like her, her, the vocal messages she sends with her physical abilities. Screwing up her face. And so she scrunches up her face. She's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not catching your drift here. Yeah, Sirio clicks his teeth at this and says, the cat was no, was an ordinary cat. No more. The others expected a fabulous beast, so that is what they saw. How fat it was, uh, what small ears it had. It was plainly a tomcat, yet the Sea Lord called it a her, and that is what they saw. Are you hearing me, girl? You saw what was there. She finally does uh, comprehend mm-hmm. basically what he's saying. And he again, with his the way that he, he phrases his words, he, so, he says, Opening your eyes is all that is needing. And he it just... The, well, I, I it was his next line in that that really got me was well that, I have that too, but I just like that beginning part the way that well he's with it's it's it. symmi- uh, symmetrical to Bran opening the right, eyes exactly. is all that's needed yeah. the true seeing type thing and it seems like the Starks have this ability of and then a having sort of true sight that a lot of that connection with the the heart tree and he's yeah. gonna tie this directly with the heart so you got the quote go ahead and yeah yeah he says the heart lies and the mind plays tricks on us but the eyes see true look with your eyes hear with your ears taste with your mouth smell with your nose feel with your skin then comes thinking afterwards and in that way, knowing the knowing. Yes. And so. Knowing the truth. And so Arya smirks at this and she gives a just so. And Sirio allows himself I a love smile. I that he, like. And it, says, uh, and I think, I think because of her response that she, she's, he, she's getting it. She's and he learning. Gets that. She's understanding. So I think this is him saying, okay, yeah, like we can she's move listening. to the next level. She's using her So he says. And this is the heart part. When they get to Winterfell, he thinks it's time that they put a needle in her hand. Arya gets super excited and she's like, for true. And she doesn't say for true. Yeah, no, time, she's, like, yes. she's like, yes. She's like. She lets out a uh, yes. I can't can't wait to show John, and then the doors <laughs> fly. Yeah, the, behind like, her, the fuck. doors of the hall and flew open with a resounding crash. I really think that George Martin hammered home that that feeling of when she mentioned she's going to be on the boat uh, in the cabin sleeping. Him saying, "Once we arrive in Winterfell," and giving her this this next goal, like, yeah, keep training on the boat. Keep oh, you know they arrive, yeah. Because, I mean, can you imagine the cool-ass well, water dancing with, training with on the, a boat? The, the, the getting waves, your sea legs, motion, you know like, Sirio's going to use that. Yeah, like he's so, a, first you're going to be climbing the, sea the, semen, the masts and doing all sorts of cool shit. And so he gives her this Did you hope. say climbing the semen? The sea masts. Oh, okay. I was going to say the sea masts, and I don't know why, but. Arya is not climbing no, no semen. No, she is definitely not yet. Not, not yet. until she comes back. and then she'll... Patreon, shout <laughs> out. Anyway. But, yeah, so I really, that. 
It's yeah, it, it sucks too because it's this. He, it's endearing it's seeing this, him treat it, her. Yeah, this way. no, like no, the they have a great, they have a great relationship. Yeah. Clearly, he, he enjoys the shit out of he her. Enjoys and she her. enjoys it. And uh, and then we we do see here in a little bit that he he is a caring mentor. Absolutely, and, and he's defensive of her. And and so this too with the door crashing right as she mentions John, it's that one last moment of solidifying like. This Arya John thing before Arya is cast we'll get out one, on we'll her get journey. One, another little yeah, moment, yeah, but, like, yeah, but, but definitely. In, well, in her excitement, in her excitement of thing thinking she's, that she's heading back up there yes. with the potential of seeing him she's again. She's been soon. dancing for a few months. Like, she's got uh, the wall isn't far from Winterfell, so she can easily oh, get a trip up there to go and see John it. It and was... show him with Sirio the yes. water dancing. So it's sort of this interruption, this door crashing, right. everything comes crashing and down. And there's a large Knight of the Kingsguard surrounded by five men in red cloaks. Yeah, the Kingsguardman has his visor up and Arya recognizes the droopy eyes and the ginger whiskers of Sir Marin Trant. And he says, Arya Stark, come with us, child. And Arya chews her lip. I noted that because... It- it's not the first time we've seen it, and George will keep putting it in, but I I really want to draw my attention to it so that way when we are reading uh, Dance, we can kind of see those times because I feel like that'll be a, an indicator as to when she is faceless versus when she's... Yeah, yeah, Arya no, Star I mean, her. that's things. her thing is her screwing up her face, her chewing her lip. Those are her... Her screwing up her face is, I don't understand, or that's stupid, and the chewing on her lip is, what's going on here? Something isn't right, or Mm. I'm nervous, or I'm trying to figure out, like, what's happening. It's her tell for when she's nervous, And she asks, what do you want? And he answers, your father wants to see you. So Arya starts to step forward. forward. And Sirio Farrell immediately puts his arm out in front of her and holds her back. Yeah. And he, uh, he asks them why... Why would Ned send Lannister guards and not men from his own house to retrieve his daughter? Yeah. And Trant tells Sirio, mind your place, dancing master. And so that's when Arya speaks up and says, my father wouldn't send you. Yeah, because it kind of registers with her and seeing, I think, Sirio hold her back on, hold on a second, kind of threw up those flares again. Yeah, it'd be Fat Tom. It'd be... Desmond, right. it'd be someone else coming to fetch her. And so she, as she says this, she snatches up her wooden sword and the Lannister men begin to laugh. And Trant says, put the stick down, girl. He says, I am a sworn brother of the King's God, the White Swords. Like, posturing? Yeah, against this kid. And she's like, yeah, so was Jamie Lannister when he killed the Mad King. Yeah, she calls him the Kingslayer. Yeah, the King, not, yeah. Not Jamie no, Lannister, definitely. which is significant, of yeah. course, but... Yeah, she just immediately defiant, and I love that's what we all love about Arya. And she says, I don't have to go with you if I don't want. And so Trant lowers his visor and says, take her. Three of them start for- forward, and Arya I guess, giddy suddenly here, terrified. But like, oh shit, they're coming for me. Fear cuts deeper than swords, she tells herself. And Styr- Sirio steps up between them, tapping his wooden sword lightly Man, on his boot. This just makes me think of how nonchalant he's stepping forward, like, all right. You guys are nothing. Yeah, yeah, no. You need to... You, and, and he calls them out. You will be stopping there. Are you men or dogs that you would threaten a child? Like... You will be stopping there. You will be stopping there. And one of the men says, get out of the way, old man. And... Yeah. Y- y- Sirio just... It's, it's described as his wooden sword here that he's holding whistles up and rang his helm. Yeah. So just... Ting, like this... <laughs> And, and so fucking says, yeah. I am Sirio Fro, and you will now be speaking to me with more respect. And so this man draws his long sword, and Sirio's wooden sword moves just blindingly cracks. fast. He breaks this fucker's hand. Yeah, crack. Just, the sword cl- uh, sh- sh- uh, not shatters, uh, falls to the ground. The dude's holding his hand, his broken hand now. And Trant says, you're quick for a dancing master. And Sirio says, you are slow for a knight. And this is when Trant loses his patience and says, kill the Bravosi and bring me the girl. And five motherfuckers step forward. The guy whose hand is jacked up pulls out a dagger with his other hand. And five on one. four. And so Sirio clicks his teeth and enters his water dancing stance, showing his side to his opponents to make a smaller opponent, Arya notes. And he says, Arya, child... Never looking at her, never taking his eyes off. Of I Atlantis. also like never revealing any panic or worry yeah, in no. his voice. Yeah, his tone is still flat. We are done with dancing for the day. 
run along now. Run to your father. And she immediately thinks that she says swift as a deer. Well, no, 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 not not. She thinks that oh, she doesn't want to leave him here right. like this, but she doesn't want to not obey his he command. Was, he, like she, she gave wants him his to, word yeah, that he would she would he, everything, everything he, he says. says. So that's when she whispers, "Swift as a deer." Just and, so, oh, just so he says as the Lannister men come around him, and again, I. I picture like a smile on his face. Oh, absolutely, because she, she like, she's applying his lesson to an actual relevant I mean, situation, th- and the fact that she like she's applying it correctly, it, he just has that that touching. And for me, it feels like the just so, especially here, is Sirius acceptance. It feels very much like Valor Margulis, like, yeah. Just so, like just so. this is the way it's got to be. Like they're yeah, gonna do yeah. this, so like you need to get the fuck out of here because. You're a child. You're my protege. Like, go. Go, you gotta, yeah. And so... She realizes at this moment um, that he's been fucking with her. Yeah, she, he be- was she begins backing her. off, and she notices immediately that, yeah, he's been toying with her. I, I thought it was kind of sweet that she thought he was going full, like, that she was that good, that mm-hmm. she was... Like, cause, oh, of course like, she does. And, well, it's, and that's what it's... It's just funny that she's so arrogant mm-hmm. in her abilities, and not that she's not a talented nine-year-old. She could kick the shit out of me, I Well, no, it's, it's not even... It, but, like, like, I get what you mean by arrogance, it's just, but it's that drive of, like, yeah. I'm going to be that good, I am good, getting better, so I can see I'm how good I am. going to assume and, assuming that, he's that it's a, quicker yeah. than anyone But she normally. right here is like, oh. So three men bear, uh, in steel armor and plate come at him, swords in hand. Arya immediately notices all the different weak points. The, they yes. have no visors, their, only their the nose thing. Safe, their hands, hands can get in. There's some points under the armpit and, neck, and, and, and the said, neck area. Yeah. So Arya immediately notes that. Arya, this little yes. girl, automatically. So what the fuck do you think? Like, Sirio noticed those while they were walking. Yeah, they're the coming door. at him, and then it says Sirio doesn't wait for them to approach him. Keeping them, uh, he so he he goes at one and he's just dancing around them, keeping them off balance, knocking one into the other, putting his boot in his ass and knocking them both down to the floor. He then turns and ducks the third man's swing and thrusts up into the guard's left eye, where he yeah, just, he just annihilates yeah, this guy's eye with a wooden which, sword. I mean, like I've always thought that too. Like in those moments of desperation, like a really anything can be damage. a weapon. Yeah, yeah. If you stab in the vital, which uh, I mean, right up through the eye, there you fucking go. And so, yeah, it's brutal, but, and it's way more brutal here than in the show. Cause in the show, yeah. it's, ve- it's almost like Robin hoodie. Yeah. Like do, 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 and like dancing. grabbing him by the cape. Yeah. And, but in this, he's, he's doing that, but he's it's, killing these he, men. He, he, well, but he's doing it. It serves he's a purpose. Maiming them, like, it's serving a purpose though. It's not just for well, the show. And it's also, I just think it's great that he takes out this guy's eye right after talking about the seeing in the true right, scene. Right. Like now you're throwing he's off. Crippling you can't. Him. Yeah. Yeah. You have that with the hands you can't touch now. Yeah. You're and, losing those senses. And so he's yeah. cutting, down on there exactly so yeah Sirio kicks the one on the ground picks up the helm of the other one and the d- guy with the dagger comes so at him and, and he, he catches catch- it yeah. with the helm and then fucking shatters his kneecap with his wooden sword oh. the last attacker Sirio dodges as the guard comes down and cuts right through his buddy who's on the ground just slicing right, right through the shoulder and Sirio throat punches the dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just, <Yeah. laughs> like. And so it says five men were down or dead as Arya reached the door. So yeah, which it's a small hall, which is a great hall. Just yeah, yeah. Small uh, hall. Ten seconds, maybe it took her to reach that That's door at most. Yeah, like he just fucking. Brrrah, and yeet. so Sirio Farrell obviously gave the command, so he's been watching as well. But yeah, five men, one with a dagger, four with long swords, and he just fucking. Yeah, and so Trant is pissed. He's like, "You oafs, you dumb!" Ripping out his sword, and he starts approaching Sirio himself, Arya Child, who I feel at this point has never looked at Arya. Still has. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no, Since he told her, "Time to run to your father." Yeah, yeah. Has not looked at her. He knows she's standing back there watching, and he calls back to her. But I also do you. Do you think he's just assumed he she's left? Or like he's assuming she needs to leave, so therefore he told her to she's gonna. But he like he's aware that she's still watching. But like, because this almost seems like a show for her of like this is what 
you do when you combine all these things. Like this is how um, you need I to, could see that you need to be this swift and like kicking them, making these clumsy. Well, I definitely think it, part of it is him showcasing to her what she has the potential to one day be capable of. Keep practicing, of. yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, I do think that it's him using his abilities to... Oh, d- yeah, 100%. And, and less so, like, that's just a byproduct. He knows that she's too arrogant to just leave and too worried, like, too good of a person. She's worried about him. Yeah. And she is especially worried when he hollers back at her right now. Yeah, Arya Child, he says, never looking. Be gone now. And then she thinks, look with your eyes, he had told her. And she saw. She saw the knight in his armor, head to foot. No weak points, nothing. No, he's got the visor. There's no gaps in the neck. Right. He has the gauntlet to hold his sword. And she sees Sirio. She saw Sirio. Leather vest, wooden sword. And she screams at Sirio to run. But, but, as we all know, the first sword of Bravos does not run, he sang, as Marin slashes at him. And Sirio ducks and slams into Marin, just bop, 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 bop with the sword, but now, nothing. my comment here, because I'm going to get into some crazy territory very soon, is that he is absolutely right. The first sword of Bravos doesn't run. He's not the first sword of Bravos anymore, first of all. Second of all, because he's jacking a car. <laughs> Continue. Uh, so yeah, he, he just hits him with a flurry of blows, but it slows Marin Trant down none, and he keeps advancing his, uh, the fourth attack, slicing right through Sirio's wooden sword and chopping it in half. Arya can't handle it at this point. Sobbing, Arya turns and runs. Yeah, and so she makes a breakneck pace through the kitchens. Running in a blind panic, knocking over this baker's girl, there's bread knocked everywhere, and then there's a butcher standing in front of her, and it's just an intense time. But yeah. there was a passage. That yeah, I probably had. where she's sitting there reciting all of her little mantras. and That would be the one. Yeah. So, yes, it says that all that Sirio Pharrell had taught her went racing through her head. Swift as a deer, quiet as a shadow, fear cuts deeper than swords, quick as a snake. Calm as still water, fear cuts deeper than swords. Strong as a bear, fierce as a wolverine, fear cuts deeper than swords. The man who fears losing has already lost. Fear cuts deeper than swords. Fear cuts deeper than swords. Fear cuts deeper than swords. And so it continues on, saying the grip of her wooden sword was slick with sweat, and Arya was breathing hard when she reached the turret stair. For an instant she froze, up or down. Up would take her to the coveted bri- covered bridge that spanned the small court to the Tower of the Hand, but that would be the way they'd expect her to go for certain. Never do what they expect, Syria once said. Arya went down and around and around, leaping over st- on the narrow stone steps two and three at a time. She emerged in a cavernous vaulted cellar, surrounded by casks of ale stacked twenty feet tall. The only light came through narrow, slanting windows high in the wall. So, yeah, she escapes from this this butcher who is staring her down, but, like, that is such a footnote to just this list of yeah. her going through because that fear cuts deeper yeah, than Yeah, and the, that's the one she's clearly needing right now Yeah, yeah. she's terrified. Yeah, I mean... And I like that she... Now, it doesn't really say that she's terrified or scared anywhere, but her repeating that one and, you know, trying to talk herself... It's her trying to convince herself and use Sirio's words too. And there's al- it's her. also th- just this child is running from this situation and still has the clarity to go, no. Like, they're going to expect me to right. go to my bedchamber. Like, yeah, it's, run to my father. Her mental tower. fortitude is fucking insane here where she's got... She's able to keep that straight. Yeah, and so, so she gets down there and realizes there's no other way out of this cellar but she can't go back up that way. To yeah. go up, they're going to find her. Yeah. And so she does manage to see the window up at the, the top, so she climbs up some casks. Well, she thinks to herself that she had to get to her father because once she got to her father, he would protect her. And just, ugh, fucking, and just knowing Ned's already probably in the, the cell. Cells, like, the black cells, yeah. So, yeah, the uh, she she's doing some cask jumping and reaches the window and... Wiggles out, reaching the ground level in the bailey. She pokes her head out in the bailey yard of the Tower of the Hand. And so she sees the Tower of the Hand and sees that the door hung splintered and broken as if 
beaten on with an axe, and a dead man lay face down on the steps, though she couldn't tell who it was. But she does recognize his colors and the uniform he's wearing to be of House Stark. Yeah. And... She doesn't know what the fuck is going yeah, on. No. And I do like how even she is aware enough to think about Illyrio, uh, Illyrio's words to Varys that one hand can die. Why not a second? Yeah, she, this this kid. Granted, it, technically, it doesn't have, it only has enough to do with themse- each other because of the fact that Varys is trying to slow things down there with that whole yeah. situation. But... You know, it's not it's not actually what's happening, but it's it is a player good connections that, yeah. there at her age. To yeah, be yeah, like definitely. And she can hear things. continual fighting and screams still coming from the Tower of the Hand, and she thinks her father, but she she can't go in. So she closes her eyes for a she moment. She knows that her father could probably be dead up there too. Yeah, he like could already be at dead. This point. So she closes her eyes for a moment because she's just too frightened to move, and she thinks they had killed Jory and Will and Heward, and. She doesn't know it yet, but Fat Tom and Farley, and we'll learn a little bit. Desmond, like, yeah, and it's, the, it's the entire household guard. Like, everyone's dead there, Arya. And so she thinks, yeah, they could kill her father and her if they caught her. Fear cuts deeper than swords. She says well, this one aloud this time. But it was no good pretending to be a water dancer. Sirio had been a water dancer and had probably been killed by the White Knight. And she was only a little girl with a wooden See, stick. Now she's already casting that into our minds yeah, that yeah. we are supposed to assume he died. He's probably dead. Hell no. Hell See, no. See, I, I don't think he's dead, but I don't think he's Jack and Hagar. I don't want to think he's Jack and Hagar. Because, like, I feel like Sirio Pharrell could easily get through that armor. <coughs> like, I think that's sort of the whole point is Arya and her, and her limited experience with this sword play doesn't know how she would get through Marin Trance armor. Right. Sirio Pharrell probably does. Yeah, and... And it's, you know, as much as I don't want it to be, I don't think that he's Jack and Agar, just because I think Serial Pharrell is his own strong character. He's a badass. He can do his shit. At the same time, it very well could be. However, if my uh, theory before that Jack and Agar is on the Wind Witch, that's how he arrived here in King's Landing. serio has been here for months beforehand, mm. and so it wouldn't make sense. Um, but... You know, Jacken might at least have some knowledge onto the ways of uh, Serial Pharrell. And so he may be making an appearance here and actually assisting yeah, yeah, in yeah. some whisperings. So Arya pokes her head out and gets to her feet, glancing around wearily, and the Red Keep seems empty, which the Red Keep is never empty. So she she's just taking a look around. She looks up longingly at her bedchamber at the Tower of the Hand and begins moving away from it to keeping from wall to wall, shadow to shadow. She actually pretends that she's chasing cats, only now she was the cat, and if they caught her, they would kill her. Yeah. So she reaches the stable without any incidents. She had seen a dozen gold cloaks going past her, but not knowing whose side they were on, (gasps) she hid and let them pass, which, fucking smart. Well, yeah, because she even thinks to herself, she doesn't actually know who they serve or what they're... She's smarter than her father. Yeah, no shit. Like... So, yeah, she just hid and let them pass. Hullen. Hullen. The... She, yeah, she walks up to the stables. She sees a body slumped over. The master of horse at Winterfell for his Arya, as long as Arya could recall, was slumped by the stable door. Stabbed so many times, his tunic looked patterned with scarlet flowers. Arya was certain he was dead, but when she crept closer, his eyes blinked open. Arya underfoot. That was really quiet, probably. Yeah. Aria underfoot, <laughs> he said, and uh, he he's all bloody. He's fucked up. He's not gonna make it. And that's it. another one of those things, again with the callbacks to Winterfell and stuff. That's just that this tie bringing it back tie, home. Yeah. yeah, that she's losing. And he says, "You must warn your lord father." And then Holland closes his eyes and died. Well, yeah, poor Holland. So she just witnessed one of the house guards die in mm-hmm. front of her now, which is a little different than, you know, Jory and them. That was she just heard about how it happened. And so to actually see him die right there. Yeah. So this is I guess I can just start because from this point on, it's just I'm going to be outpouring about Arya. So I I am a big fan of the theory that Arya has a much darker trajectory than actually being a sort of hero. And I think she's going to be doing some pretty dark shit. 
And so my one of my theories is that she might be the one to blow the casks in King's Landing. And it starts right here with Holland. Yeah. This is her first experience with death at her feet, having a conversation with the dying person, and seeing someone quick. taking their last breath before her. It's someone she knows. It's Holland who's been there probably, I mean, since she was born. It's yeah, essentially I mean, because she it. did see, like, the butcher's boy, but she saw him slumped over. Yeah, she saw him already carried. dead. He was like, already dead. Holland is alive. Holland was alive, said her name, told her something, and then died in front of her. Like, that's a whole different fucking yeah. experience than just seeing a corpse. And, I mean, it's still, for a child, it's still a lot, but... This guy died in front of her. That's like the first, and she she's she's handling it. She yeah. in, inside were more bodies. Uh, inside is also a wagon that's stacked and full of crates and chests. Which yeah, so, full spoiler, it's the, their shit. It's yeah, it's the, all the, it's how and Stark's she says goods. That. She says that this is the wagon that they were loading to take down to, yeah, to the yeah. The, clearly, the men, the and dead men, were loading the car. Most they, of them were the uh, li- Stark, Stark, Stark men. men. Yeah. Uh, she sees one Lannister, one yeah. person in red cloak. Well, then one of those Starks was Desmond. Yeah. And he was the house guard that brought Arya back to her room and told her that he her father his... is safe. Yeah, drew he drew his sword. Way which we, over the top. Yeah, which we called him out on because Roderick would have called him out on it. And says that every Northman is worth 10 Lannisters. Yeah. And so, so she, in her anger, and I'm, I don't. It doesn't surprise me. Like, I don't... She starts kicking him. Well, he's laying on his back with dead uh, with flies walking on his eyes, and the, the one dead Lannister man is next to him, and she just thinks only one. The, right. Like, you said that you could take on ten of these motherfuckers, yet there's one dead and there's seven dead Stark guys, men in yeah. here. There should be 70 dead Lannisters in here. And, yeah, so it's this outpour of emotion where... Yeah, and this is where I think what Holland was... Serial Pharrell, she just Holland. lost Serial Pharrell, and she he was coming back home with her. All these men were accompanying her back home, and now they're dead. And so it's not anger at Desmond for this and failing. Like, it's her it's, expressing her I grief. I don't know what's happening. It's scary. You said you were going to protect my father, but now you're dead, and all you managed to do is to kill yeah. one of them. And so she yells liar at him. Liar! And that's it. Like It, it really is just this poor nine-year-old girl expressing her grief. In the only way she knows how. And so she takes it out on the nearest thing that she has an issue with. Yeah. And so then she does, as she decides to herself, which again, the presence of mind to not sit there the whole time and just Weep. cave in on yourself. And yeah. just, she she decides she needs to saddle how her, she needs to get the hell out of the King's Landing. Yeah, she all she had to, to do is follow the King's Road up to Winterfell. Like, And so she goes to make a saddle, and it occurs to her that. Or she, she sees a fallen chest. She sees something catches her eye, and she realizes it's her chest. Yeah, her chest so she fell and cracked open, so she goes go over digging. and... Yeah, she, she's going to need uh, warm clothes heading north, which logical. She needs a needle. Well, like, yeah, but, I mean, clothes are... That's yeah, so, a valid fucking yeah, thing as well. she definitely needs that. So she's going through. She actually half expects a needle to be stolen, and then is quite relieved when she finds it. And so, as soon as her hand finds the needle, though, a voice behind her says, There she is! And startled, Arya turns around, and there's a stable boy behind her smirking with a pitchfork in his hand. I just picture the fat bully kid with, like, the fucking stupid goofy hat holding the ice cream he stole from the poor kid down the road going, ha ha, found mm, you. Yeah. Like, fuck. So Arya asks who he is, and he kind of laughs and says, don't know me, but I know her, wolf girl. Like, all right, you simpleton. And she's like, yeah, whatever, you weirdo. I, help me saddle my horse. I have to get the hell yeah, out of here. Yeah, my father's hand, he'll reward you. And he says, father's dead. The queen will be rewarding me. Come here, girl. And he starts shuffling towards her. Arya warns him, stay away. Very, she gives him a warning. Very stay polite. Away. Very proper. As her fingers find and close around Needle's hilt. And he says, come here, girl. And he grabs her arm hard. She goes into panic mode. Which she should, like. Here's the interesting bit. Every lesson Siri O'Farrell had taught her flew from her mind in the sudden terror. Gone. The only lesson she could remember was the one Jon Snow had given her, the very first. And so she drove the pointy end in him. 
I didn't write down the quote. I'm just saying that. How do you not have the quote memorized? She stuck him with the pointy end. I said that. You said she drove the pointy end well, in him. Well, because says that, that she drove the pointy end She uh, stuck upward. him with the pointy end. It says she drove the pointy end upward with wild hysterical strength. I did have the quote. I just didn't realize I had it there. Fucking and so the quote a. isn't just stick him with the pointy end there. She stuck him with the pointy end. That's what is she did. the whole fucking, the premise of dying it together to John, you plebeian. Anyway, wild hysterical strength. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's, it's that panic. He's yeah. grabbing me. And... I like how she drives it into his stomach and it comes out, out his between yeah. his shoulder blades. Yeah. And this fat stable boy panics, grabs the blade with his hands and says, oh, God, take it out. When she took it out, he died. Th- that that statement, the way that Martin just, when when she took it out, he died. It's, that's chilling. It's fucking just, like. Arya stood over the body, still and frightened in the face of death. Blood had seeped from the boy's mouth and belly and his hands where he had grabbed Needle. Pooling underneath him, she slowly backed away. She had to get away. Someplace far from here. Someplace safe. Safe away from the stable boy's accusing eyes. So, yeah, she just killed the first person. And while he 100%, I think she was in the right to defend herself in this situation. She's feeling guilty as She's fuck. feeling guilty, but she just killed someone, and she's not collapsing into right. ruin. Right, she's, Obviously, the heightened adrenaline of the situation, just witnessing a man die before her, someone she knew and potentially cared about slightly, at least. No, she, yeah, she definitely cared about it. Uh, yeah, it and the when she took it out, he died. It's so matter of fact that it's just not quite. I mean, could you imagine Sansa if the, if Sansa had a dagger? If the same thing, Sansa just happens to have her hand on a table with a dagger, and someone grabs her, startled, she drives it into their heart. Sansa's gonna collapse yeah, she's to the gonna ground, freak out, shaking. Yeah, and like yeah, absolutely. And Arya she's stands five years over older. the body, looking at the pool, the and blood just doesn't pooling, want him looking back at her, anymore. and doesn't want those accusing eyes on her. So she turns and and goes to saddle the horse. But, but as she's doing so, she realizes they've got the fucking gates closed. This city's on lockdown once again. Her awareness yeah. of how things are going to work, and then she even goes further and says. All the portcullises, all the guardhouses leading out are also going to be, I guarantee, don't allow anyone, anyone through. Out, she yeah. says, I could probably pretend to get by as a boy, but they probably have orders not to let anyone, anyone out. out. Yeah. But I know a way out that's not through the gates. She's not entirely sure if she can find the room that held the monsters again, but she had to try. So she ends up taking one of her own cloaks, rolls up some other clothes, and hides a needle in the folds of the cloak. And with this bundle, she creeps out of the stables, still hearing screaming in the distance. And she's never seen so many men lining the walls, but she doesn't know what the fuck is going on. So she's like, I I don't know what to do. And she had to move, yet she's too frightened to move. And And she couldn't make herself. The quote, I have the the exact quote written down. Calm as still water, a small voice whispered in her ear. And Arya startled looks around wildly, but there is no one in the stables but her, the horses, and the dead men. Now this, I I firmly believe Sirio survived, and he's here with her. He's not necessarily present, because I feel like he knows that his part has been played. Um, but I just, I, there's something going on here. The only other option is I can think that she understands Wolf and Nymeria's like, hey, I remember the mantras too. Yeah, no, it this stuck out to me too because it's a it's a thing. Arya hears someone else yes, saying it, it and reacts to it physically, like, and it's... she she hears quiet as a shadow, also. Yeah, but then it, like, because then she says, was it her own words or Syria? Well, this this and definitely then it's, is. This is where it starts casting the doubt this, on the yeah, previous. The quiet as a shadow is her own mind. Right, it's him she, reminding her of her, that mantra. She needed that first boost to push her. Into yeah, yeah. He, that's him saying, "Stay fear, calm. Like fear, you've got this. Like, nice. yeah, yeah. Calm is still water. Like you're good. Like relax. Take a breather. Remember the mantras. And then she does quiet as a shadow. Like then she exactly. And he, she I fought, think yeah, that no, he, I, he made 
that was the, and... the 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 feeling I was get that or my for some reason my thought was Bran whispering Future, in people's like legs. oh shit. Yo, that just fucking blew my goddamn mind. Like, Bran Like, when he's hollering her, yeah. and yelling and... Oh, fuck. That, well, like, at that point, I could see it being a Bran who knows what he's doing. And so he's there watching, and Arya's... And, well, he doesn't need to he, yell like, the, with the, the emotion. Way, the he way he's, to... he's looking at her, it looks like she's about to, like, you know, freak out. So he just says, like, calm as still water. Yeah. And... Like, that's why yeah. it's a small voice whispered, like... That's cool. Yeah, so, that was my thought, but anyway... Just, like, the way he yells incorrectly into Hodor, that's show stuff, but... The like, show we stuff, yeah. I think it might And go I also subscribe to the, he may be the one who whispered right, in the Mad might, King's ear. And so, this is when all. he has some more control, so maybe Arya will kill, the, you know, the Night King, or play that big yeah, role yeah, yeah. if he's sitting here. Maybe that was him influencing her... Her journey. To make sure she gets Stay where she Stay calm, needs you to need to survive Calm this still water. our father needs to die but, but and that's it was only one line whispered but it, it was the only it, thing that she needed to hear right kicked then. it into drive though yeah Dang, and it emboldens cool. her so it says it was the scariest thing she had ever done and but she steps out and she wanted to run and hide but makes herself walk ever so slowly as to not draw attention she never looked up she could felt like she could feel them watching her, but by the time she reached the shadow of the royal sept, she was completely cold with sweat, but no one had raised the alarm. So it seemed like she was scot-free. Yeah. So she makes it into the sept, which is empty as well. Yep. And she steals a couple candles because the, the gods aren't going to – they're not going to mind a couple Again, stolen candles. Again, the foresight. Like, I'm going to need some candles. I Well, she knows where she's going. It was pitch black down yeah, there. Yeah, she time. remembers yeah. what it was like. And I already can't remember my way, so – I'm definitely going to need I'm going to want light. light. And, I mean, she doesn't really know – I mean, she knows she wants to get out of the city, but – she might be spending a night down there or something. Like she's got, she well, doesn't at know. This, at the moment, she wants to get out of the castle. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not she wants to city. follow the whole like thing, but like but candles for the she, night uh, if you gotta like cramp up. Whatever. She takes about an hour or two to track down that room, that yeah. cellar, and so she's checking every window and slit and back alley and everything she can, and finally finds the room. So I thought it was interesting that. Yeah, crawling in and out of windows and over walls, quiet as a shadow. Once she had heard a woman weeping. I don't know why that stuck out to me, but it did. Do you think she's hearing maybe like Sansa? Well, I guess that would be more of a girl weeping, but it's, well, it could like, be Cersei. Because she you know? gets to this alley, like because she leaves the so she leaves the set by a back window. Right. Then she gets uh, back to the alley, which was relatively easy. The alley where she first found the Comcat and started chasing him through the window. She got lost after that. So. She essentially is in, like, the dark, crawling in and out of different windows, kind right. of descending lower into these depths. So that's what I took it as, is in, like, this darkness, in this sort of descending down into this weird shit where the wizard and the monsters are, she hears a woman weeping in, the, like, just off as she's... Yeah, I mean, because it could definitely be things like uh, well, a serving maid or, like, Jane Poole. My immediate thought went to... When Varys is walking with Tyrion, he tells Tyrion they don't want a torch because there are things in the darkness that he would rather not see. And that was the only thing that was going through my head when that she That's heard that woman fuck. weeping was she's got candles. What if they were lit and she could have saw so like that was immediately where my thought Gee, went with that was that's like creepy she shit, like man. yeah cuz it was like she has the candles, and then she's down there crawling through this darkness. And it's a very, it's a uh, once she heard a woman weeping. That's that's it. And like, okay, yeah, that's a random. Yeah, I mean, it leads like I had kind of taken it just as you know, people were just killed. Stark guards, people are worried in the streets. Yeah, so yeah, just, definitely. But the way you put it in that way, it just makes it fucking Cause ominous. The, yeah, because the image in my head is like she's she's just booking it, like going kind of on muscle Checking memory the, yeah. through the, this dark, trying to get back to the the, the monster area, and so she's go, you know going through this crazy area, but. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm just interpreting it wrong, but it seemed very ominous to me. So she uh yeah, she finds her way to the window leading down to the monsters and she lights the candle and descends. And this time the monsters did not frighten her, but seemed as old friends. Old friends. I mean, how she's grown. Like yeah. she I mean She was terrified and had to run out of this room before. Yeah. 
She can, uh, she, so she whispers dragons and she pulls out Needle, even though Needle is tiny compared to these things. It she still, still feels better. Yeah, Hell yeah. Which is nice. So she continues on and she notices a bunch of rats, but the rats do not scare her, but other things did. And she kind of starts thinking about the stable boy and tripping herself out. This is, this is sort of what called me back to the once heard a woman weeping. Like, this is sort of what I'm picturing is these right. things just standing there next to her and her not knowing in the darkness. Like, that's the feel I got because, yeah, she starts picturing the stable boy, his hands curled into claws, blood dripping from his palms from where Needle had cut her, waiting to grab at her as she passed. Like, yeah, that's yeah, fucking creepy. She, she's With those got the... dead, unseeing eyes. And so then she reminds herself again. <coughs> I just want to say, like, when you just said those dead, unseeing eyes, you, like, stared off into the corner, and it really, it, like, sent a fucking <laughs> chill up my spine. That was fucking creepy. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, she starts telling herself, you know, fear cuts deeper than knives and reminds herself of a, Oh, you got something? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, like, because she's thinking about the stable boy and that he might grab her, and she thinks he'll he'll see this candlelight from a mile away. Because right. when the wizard and the the dude had their torch, I could see that. That's how I kept track of them. So she thinks she might be better off without the light. Then, and and I had it quoted specifically again. Fear cuts deeper than swords. Swords, the f- quiet voice whispers again. Yes. Oh, right. I did actually have it. Is there this too, again but... another assistance of no? Don't kill the light. Keep the light on. You're just like, fine. Yeah, yeah. Like you are. You're fine. There's no one down here. All the shit's on the surface. Yeah. Like keep proceeding. So again, yeah, she hears the whisper, and so I do again think there's outside assistance yeah. here trying to remind her, like, don't worry. Keep this yourself. is the one because initially I was thinking maybe Syria was tailing her. Like you, right. this is the one that made me think Bran. Because right. it's him seeing, and he sees yeah. that she's about to cut off this light. If she does, she's fucked down here. She's not going to find yeah. the escape. Well, and that's where we learn that she's not trying to get outside of King's Landing, yeah. but outside of the castle. Because she could head down. She remembers the way down towards the well, but then she turns off a different way instead. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, the, the voice whispers. It kind of emboldens her. And and after the voice whispers, she remembers Winterfell's Yeah. Crips. Now... This is that point again where it gets creepy mm. when she's she remembers they were Rob. way they're way scarier than this way. yeah like that, and that's it like that that they were this is nothing Rob had taken her Sansa and baby Bran who was about as old as Rickon, Rickon is now point, down by the hand with a can, a single candle past their grandfather and past Brandon and Liana down to where their own tombs would be. And so they got to see these staring I mean, king's faces as they're walking past, knowing that that's where their bodies lay. The, the th- that's dead where kings they're going to be interred. And here is your resting place for eternity. And with the single candle, uh, it's pretty dark down there. It's creepy. Sansa starts mentioning that she's heard that there are spiders and rats as big as dogs and Rob. And I imagine it's that oh, elder yeah. brotherly creepy. Oh, absolutely. Just oh, that, no. There those, are worse what? things than spiders. And coming crawling out from behind Well, it. he get, Rob gives the best line. This is where the dead walk. And for a minute, in me forgetting during this reread that this is just a prank being pulled, I was like, yo, like, right. is, is that what they, th- is that the tales told about the crypt? Then... Comes crawling out from behind the <laughs> st- the two, all white and pale and sickly. Again, looking. I was like, I don't remember this don't, at all. Yeah. What the fuck? And Sansa screams. Hell and yeah! Runs. Poor Bran just shrieks and grabs Rob's leg, sobbing. Whereas Arya punches, held her ground, and, and socks this spirit in the face, which in was the stomach. Just- I thought. Oh, in the yeah, stomach, stomach, yeah. Which was only Jon Snow covered in flour. And him and Rob are dying. They are laughing their asses off. Now, I have to I have to relate with Jon and Rob here, because this oh, is the this kind of shit awesome. we would yeah, do, 100%. Like, But one of us was always Arya, too. Where right, you mother... If you, if you came in too close, you were getting bopped. Yeah. Because, you know, I can't and, uh, I can't handle that flight or flight thing. That's just, that just happens. So my reaction might be to sock you in the fucking throat. <laughs> Don't scare me again, you prick. So she... This... So memory they, makes John her and, smile. Yeah, John and Rob were laughing. Then Arya sh- says, you're stupid. But you're then stupid. shortly after, her and, her and Bran are start laughing as yeah. well. And it's a great time. And yeah, this makes her smile. Like, oh. And uh, it makes her smile. And 
it re- after that, everything could be better once she was home again, safe behind the granite walls of Winterfell. And she, I I really like that after all this, her plan is still the same from this morning. Yeah, the darkness hold, held no more fear for her. The stable boy, this, this line, the stable boy was dead. She'd killed him. And if he jumped out at her, she'd kill him again. She was going home. And everything would be better when she was safe behind Winterfell's gray stone walls. She like she's already over yeah, it. It's already not guilt, and it's moving on. Like I'm, I, I'm I'll going do it. home. I did it, and I have to. I'll, I'll do, do it, it again. again. If I yeah, have to. I'm going home. And, and so, so uh-huh. the this this is I think my favorite end to a chapter so far in this book. Yeah, yeah. It says her footsteps sent soft echoes hurrying ahead of her as Arya plunged deeper into the darkness. Okay. So, one, two, here we go. One, there was the direct quote of, uh, after she thinks of the spirit with John and punching him and laughing, the memory makes her smile, and after that, the darkness held no more terror for her. So, for Arya, the darkness is no longer... Right. No, the night is no now, longer dark and full of do terror. do you think that's basically the her Gohan going Super Saiyan 2? That's her, her snapping, her accepting the rage, the or the understanding that you know death is a thing it's a tool that needs to be there I'll, i killed the boy no i he don't even think i don't even think it's a thought process like that i think it's this memory emboldens her thinking that the only real encounter sort of she's had with the the things she's fearing these ghosts and everything was john jumping out covered in flour and right. they laughed about it and so I think it's sort of that, that like it's not real. To, it wasn't yeah. real then. It's not real now. Winterfell Crips has these fucking dead people and the statues. This place has dragon skulls, which I've already seen. They're already back there. Yeah, they're already back there. And so I don't really give a shit. And the the last line, the footsteps as she's descending into darkness. I I think that's just that's her journey. She's descending into yeah, her own into darkness, darkness now. Yeah. Where that, well, that's definitely how I saw it. Was that just... it's her walking out? It's the echoing footsteps. If I think of like like a building closing down at night, the last person to leave, you hear those echoing footsteps, and it's her beginning this new venture, starting something fresh. It's her walking into see, the, I, I or walking in. in the I went morning. much darker, and I pictured it metaphorically that it wasn't just her footsteps, but now it was the footsteps of the stable boy behind her. And those are the echoing footsteps she's hearing is going to start being the ones that she kills in her descent into darkness. Mm-hmm. Like the, it's it's carrying that weight with you now. It's not she she ain't just walking with her own footsteps. It's going to and especially with the faceless thing, she's going to be switching people, names yeah. so much that she's going to carry all these people with her. Because as much as I do think there's a darkness in her, I do think Arya Stark is a good person just a little lost and corrupted and twisted by the things she's experiencing in this very chapter and then a little later on. So I just feel like she... So in a sense, she's going to carry the guilt like Ned Stark does, but yeah. she's going to use Utilize it. it, and she's not going to let it hold and her so back that, and that, I think, it. is what the, foot, okay. the echoing footsteps yeah, okay. are into yeah, her it's, darkness. It's the is... beginning of these additional... People that she carries the lessons because we mentioned it the, actually Micah before. Already she started one. with uh, John Snow. She took lessons from the pair, the sword playing at swords with Micah. Yeah. She's taking lessons from Serio. She always adds these and adapts and evolves to them. Well, that's how she she utilizes these. So I feel like it's almost also Serio is yeah. there in the those shadows. His footsteps are echoes because she well. she immediately she's putting and I, I believe that's the intention. She's putting. John, like John, the spirit covered in flour, is the stable boy. So when the stable boy jumps out like John did, she's going to do what punch she did him to John. She's going to fucking just, jab him with needle again in, in the in the yeah. stomach, like right. she did. It's that same, same fucking thing, imagery yeah. of, and so yeah, that <sighs> I love Arya chapters. Anyway, yeah, because that shows that she has the when she was in that scary crypt, she had that serial moment where mm-hmm. she didn't panic or freak out or get scared. So why would she when she's she killed this other one? Mm-hmm. What so jump out at me? Yeah, I'll, I'll just stab you. Yeah, again. I'll stab you again. It was reactionary. Type so, thing. so that that's in, that. Inductee. I mean, is it? Can it go to anyone but Serial Pharrell? I, I don't really know. Um. No, I'll, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to fucking 
but I'll, I'll give it to both of them. I'm going to give it to John and Rob for playing the because <laughs> that's 100% what our relationship was like for the first, what, like 18 years of our, well, my life. and then 26 years yeah, of our life. Yeah, so, um, yeah, just because, yeah. one, it's a great memory, and Martin does really good at inserting these memories at the best times yeah, to, yeah. to inspire that, and I, like, this one was just great because it was really, like, Sansa was you know, getting fucking terrified and shrieked yeah, and that ran. Cracked me but then up, it's but... Bran and Arya and Rob and John, sort of the light hearted Starks that we're all yeah, laughing yeah. about it at the end and, and it's just such this weird image, like they're laughing in the face of death because they're right in exactly. front of their own graves. Yeah. Like And it's uh, it's the kids. It's also showing the kinship between Oh them. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's really important. John right is now. accepted there as a, exactly. but John is but notice... probably the only one without the the tomb so can i also point out that he was the one the covered ghost. in white he was the ghost yeah well he's the one without a tomb and he's the one with the, yeah the and spirit so left to wander he's also fuck. the one without a sword across yeah. his like john is it's the symbolism is fucking insane in the crypts john is yeah, the ghost there i mean yeah. obviously that's why his the dire you know, wolf, dire wolf the colors, he's the, the only imagery. person he's there the... in this game that doesn't have a tomb ready for right, him and exactly. won't have the sword keeping but the he's the one walking but the, the, yeah he'll he's be the, the one walking, walking the crypts exactly yeah so um john snow and rob for the prank not for all the yeah, other scary all shit so <laughs> that those are value inductees who you who you are um i'm gonna give it to cereal since you didn't i was gonna give it to john but you went with john yeah so word. uh and through Serio, I also want to just again applaud fucking Martin's combat. I, I love, love the yeah, way this yeah. man writes his battle so scenes stylish. and like he it just you know Serio getting the helmet and catching the dagger and fucking Jab kicking them in the, the butt and like yeah. the, the Adam's apple fucking the job eye. and just all the dope shit. So Serio Pharrell because it's the last chance. For yeah, that. no, it paints a vivid picture and. I know, like, a lot of people give him shit about his numbers, that George doesn't keep excellent track of, like, numbers as far as men and soldiers. I don't care about that, because I don't keep track of that shit either, really. I'm not like, oh, okay, 20,000 men, and then 4,000 yeah, went to Whispering Wood. So, I know some people do that, and that's absolutely fine, but I really like these these one-on-ones, these yeah. close skirmishes. It's not really the big battle scenes. Obviously, on a yeah, show, was, uh, big battle scenes are sweet, but... There was somebody who had shared a picture of, apparently, Martin had... Uh said that it's a cannon like that's the image he pictures when he pictures this scene and it was Rhaegar and Robert's battle at the Trident yeah and they're both mounted and got their weapons fucking up and he j- apparently just loves that picture the song Ice and Fire one um, or the, probably or the world of Ice and Fire image. most likely yeah. yeah yeah um and then there's this other picture I saw that I would really like to and I believe it's probably going to appear but it's the Robert Baratheon and Dunk Fight yeah, in yeah. The, and that would be fucking cool to see, but well, those are our thoughts, inductees, and just general thoughts about little Arya Stark and where she's going. Uh, if you like Arya Stark talk, you should subscribe to our Patreon, which you can find at patreoncom manners. We have the sample winds of wind cha- uh, winds of winter sample chapters with the Theon one coming very soon. We've been saying that for a while, but we promise it is. Um, we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash brotherhood podcast. I'm on Twitter at manners without you're on Twitter at carstark 92. Yeah. So follow us, send us an email without manners, brotherhood at gmail.com. We love hearing from you and having your input on some of these theories. Yeah. And thoughts some of my, my, my favorite things to theorize are like end game. So like, where do you think Arya is going to end up? Is she, is she going to be this great, sort of avenging archangel who sweeps in with these face changing abilities and kills the people we hate and we're like fuck yeah or, or is, is it she gonna, gonna be lead dark to the or and she's gonna she cause gonna a lot of issues destroy a lot of people we care about now yeah and what if she leads to innocent. the death of millions and you know a lot of people not to bring the show into it we're mad about the danny stuff and danny blowing up king's landing what if in the books Arya causes that yeah she's yeah. the death of king's she's landing she's the cause she of it i mean it. King's Landing becomes the epitome of her pain in the first book. Yeah, it, we're, everything we're, we're points, in the middle. Of yeah, that right everything now, points so. to King's Landing for her. So let us know what you think Arya's going to end up at the end, or Jon Snow, or Danny, or Tyrion, or any of our favorites, and just yeah. write us in. So but, next episode is going to be Sansa Four. Yeah, and then after that will be Jon, some number that I don't remember, and then following that Sansa's is Bran. Sansa's going to be uh, summoned to talk with some 
so, King's Landing yeah, leaders yeah. and maybe write a letter or two. Yeah, so let us know what you think about that and, you know, what you think about George putting all the kids' chapters consecutively after a Ned to chapter where he their was father, caught. The first... And then uh, I don't know if Danny comes up again before Ned or if Ned's got another nasty chapter coming yet. Who knows? But hit us up. We'll be here. Valor de Harris. Peace. Peace.